Hello everyone, today's video is about digestive symptoms that arose after treatment for H. pylori. Uh, just before jumping into the video, if you don't mind taking a quick moment to please like, share, subscribe, and or post a quick comment on the video, I'd really appreciate it. So thanks in advance for taking a second to do that. And as per usual, nothing I'm saying should be construed as medical advice. This is for informational purposes only, and if you need medical advice, please talk to your healthcare provider to get that advice. So someone posted a question on one of my other videos, it was all about H. pylori, and kind of natural treatment options for that and um, so the comment goes um, I took strong antibiotics in the past to kill off H. pylori which worked however since then my stomach is off can't tolerate any foods always have pain gas bloating etc can you speak to this <clears throat> so thank you for the question I'm sorry to hear about the health challenges that's it's really big drag when you're dealing with one health issue take a treatment and then have other symptoms that that arise from that um, so I've had a number of patients who have had a analogous experiences, you know, whether it's taking antibiotics to treat um, H. pylori or to treat a urinary tract infection or to treat pneumonia or something else like that. Um, it's uh, just an unfortunate thing. It doesn't happen that often, thankfully, at least in my experience, like many, many patients take the antibiotics for those conditions all the time and they don't have any ill effects afterwards, but some people do. So what gives? So again, as per usual, I can't give any specific advice over social media to this individual uh, asking the question, but just to kind of speak generally on this topic. Um, <clears throat> when I've had uh, patients in my own practice who have post-antibiotic um, treatment symptoms, um, going on a really good uh, potency, like a high potency, uh, broad spectrum probiotic usually goes a really long way. Um, when it comes to probiotics, um, generally I like to get um, into the fairly high dosage range. You know, back in the day, you know, it'd be pretty hard pressed to find probiotics that were above maybe five or 10 billion colony forming units um, per capsule. Nowadays, there are products that, you know, more routinely have say 50 billion colony forming units per capsule. There's a few products out there that I think have like 100 billion or I think even some maybe with 200 billion. So just like ridiculously high amounts of these um, probiotics per capsule, but getting into a fairly robust dose is usually what I recommend. Unfortunately, on social media, I can't specifically speak to um, exact dosages because that would be construed as medical advice, but um, that's something that, um, sorry, I just have to pause the video for one second. Sorry for the intermission there. I just had a little tickle in my throat and I, it wasn't going to go away. So um, so uh, I can't speak to specific dosages, unfortunately, but um, you know, fair, fairly high dosing of probiotics is something that I would um, certainly consider for um, an analogous case in my practice. And then over and above that, you know, just begging the question, well, what might the antibiotic have um, uh, facilitated the growth of? So, you know, the concern, of course, and what happens, again, sometimes is the antibiotic will kill off the good bacteria. So probiotics are low. Replenishing with probiotics will you know, oftentimes be very, very helpful or, or just totally resolve things. When that doesn't totally resolve things, then um, one of the things that's high on my suspicion list is that there might have been an induction of yeast overgrowth or there may have been an induction of SIBO. Um, so with yeast, of course, if we you know kill off too many of our um, probiotics, if we kill off too many of our commensal bacteria, it creates this little ecological niche, this little opening for some other critter to move in and start growing. And um, unfortunately, yeast can be fairly opportunistic in that way. So um, it, um, in an analogous case in my practice, I might work with some anti-yeast therapy or, you know, do a stool test, get some testing to see if that maybe is what's going on first, but um, kind of pursuing yeast or um, possibly um, SIBO um, can seem a little bit counterintuitive where with SIBO, it's small intestine bacterial overgrowth thinking like, oh, well, antibiotics should be killing off those bacteria. So how would a bacterial overgrowth occur? Well, depending on the antibiotic type, um, there are some antibiotics that are very, very good at killing SIBO. There's others that are not so good at killing SIBO. So if it's a type of antibiotic that's not good at killing SIBO, but did happen to kill off some of the healthy uh, microflora, um, then again, that could create an ecological niche where SIBO could arise. And, you know, antibiotic use is a risk factor for SIBO development, somewhat, again, somewhat ironically. Um, so that's generally what I would be um, pursuing. Be very, or be thinking about in my, my practice, if I had an analogous case, um, you know, the intolerance to different foods, you know, again, it would kind of depend on the nature of that. It's like, oh, foods are causing rashes now or giving me like a rapid heart rate or it's causing my eczema to flare or something. It's like, well, that would be maybe a different kettle of fish. But if the intolerance of food is more around, um, you know, oh, I'm just getting really bloated and just nothing's really sitting in my stomach and feeling nauseous, that kind of stuff could very well be related to 
you know, either a probiotic deficiency and or a yeast um, or SIBO um, overgrowth issue. Um, so I think those are all the thoughts that I'll share about that. I think that's um, pretty, pretty, um, pretty cut and dry there. So um, thank you for the question. I hope that you're feeling better soon. Um, and if anybody has any questions on this topic or on anything else, just post in the comment section below and I will do my best to answer as soon as I can.